Hello my fellow MCs, Primo here, and today we are talking about the 5 best value items you can obtain in Honkai Star Rail. Now I know we all love a great deal when we see one, and I'm here to tell you there are some absolute gems and steals you can have for your account. So let's sit back, grind some stellar jades, and let's talk about it. I want to protect everyone too! Help me Mr. Svarog! Honkai Star Rail has gone down a unique route where they are providing the opportunity for players to obtain 5 star light cones in many ways. One very good budget option is the light cones you can obtain in Herda Shop. To obtain these light cones, all you need to do is play through the simulated universe, which is technically being done already to obtain the weekly rewards, and accumulate items called Herda's Bonds. Once you collect up to 8, you are able to buy one of 3 5 star light cones in the shop. Now you can gain quite a few Herda's Bonds by doing every single simulated universe world at difficulty 1. To be exact, you can obtain 10 Herda Bonds as a first time clearance reward, which is good enough for one 5 star light cone and one super imposition if you so choose. My personal preference for the Herda light cones is the cruising of the Stellar Sea, which is of the hunt variety. This is a really nice stat stick for crit rate, especially at super imposition 5, where you can potentially get up to 32% crit rate when an enemy is less than or equal to 50% HP. Some characters that work really well with this are Yan Qing, Su Sheng, and my personal preference, Don Hung. Now the other two light cones are decent and are definitely usable depending on the characters on your roster. More specifically, Texture of Memories is a very good option for Fire MC, while On the Fall of the Eon is okay for a unit like Clara, although I don't personally recommend this one for her. Another thing I wanted to note is that to get the best value out of the 5 star light cone you obtain from Herda Shop, you should spend any extra Herda Bonds on the Super Imposer. Costing only 2 Herda's Bonds, it would only take 8 total to be able to superimpose your recently purchased 5 star light cone to level 5, which that in itself is amazing value. That's essentially getting 5 cruising of the Stellar Seas in about a month's time. To be able to have a Super Imposition 5 5 star light cone in the early and mid game is amazing for all players, but more specifically for players who have no interest in the weapon banner as their options are more limited. This is geared more towards FTP players like myself who really want to build up their character diversity for the account and may not necessarily have any interest in pulling on the weapon banner. Overall, when I first found out about these light cones, I was very excited just to be able to have a 5 star light cone on my account because of how rare it is in comparison to Genshin Impact. But seeing how easy it is to accumulate Herda's Bonds as a first time clearance or weekly reward, I can honestly say it may be the best value overall in Honkai Star Rail. I want to protect everyone too! Help me Mr. Svarog! Continuing on with the topic of unique ways to obtain 5 star light cones, the Starlight Exchange provides players the chance to obtain any of the standard character's signature 5 star light cones at a highly reduced price. To obtain these light cones, you are going to have to forego buying more special Star Rail passes by showing a little patience and just wishing and obtaining 4 and 5 star characters and light cones, you'll be able to passively earn Starlight which you can spend later on. When you compare the cost of the light cone to the total number of wishes you can buy, you're looking at a cost of about 30 wishes, which is about a third of the amount it takes to guarantee a 5 star character or light cone. That value in itself, essentially a 66% discount for a huge damage and utility boost is really second to none. Ever since I first saw this, I couldn't believe we had such an easy and convenient way to be able to pick and choose which light cone we would want for our account. Not only do you get great value in the cost of the light cone, you also get great value in the overall usefulness of most of these light cones. I can honestly say I would not mind any of the light cones in the shop, except for maybe Himeko's, only because it is very situational. I know for myself, I am looking to grab Welts in the name of the world to be able to give him a nice damage and attack boost, as well as extra utility with an effect hit rate increase. Some other light cones I would like to highlight as an amazing value are Gopards and Bailu's light cones. Both of these light cones are very universal. What I mean by this is that they can be utilized by all preservation and abundance units, and you can make the claim it'll be their best in slot no matter what. Now I can understand the other side of the coin where people will not want to lose out on the 30 special Star Rail passes and have more chances at a limited 5 star character. However, my counter to this claim is that what if, hypothetically, you went ahead and spent the 600 Ember for 30 wishes, but you got absolutely nothing of value for it. 
Eventually, when you got to the 5 star chance, what if you lost the 50 50 and ended up getting a standard 5 star light cone, even one that you didn't want? You could be looking at a huge waste of tickets just to have attained a 5 star light cone when you could have just went ahead and bought the one you wanted at 30 wishes. Now, I'm always of the mindset that I want to collect as many characters as possible, thus I would never spend on the weapon banner. This is a great alternative for myself and others to obtain high quality 5 star light cones at a discounted price while also leaving out RNG aspects by giving us a choice. I want to protect everyone too! Help me Mr. Svarov! Self-model resin, although very scarce in terms of the number you can obtain, provides absolutely amazing value for all players, whether you are F2P or a whale. We all struggle with using up our daily trailblaze power only to be greeted with the dreaded defense boots or outgoing healing bonus chest pieces. The amazing thing about self-model resin is that it completely takes out two layers of RNG when it comes to relic hunting, the type of relic, and the main stat associated with it. So if you're looking for a specific crit damage chest piece, you won't have to look any further than using up one of your precious self-model resins. Now, the only way we are able to obtain this rare item is to level up the battle pass 240, which can take quite a bit of time, so plan accordingly. The question you may ask yourself is when is it the best time to use? My recommendation is to use it as the last piece fill-in once you are able to farm sufficient relics for your target character. Let's say, for example, you have decent relics for your character and you are just waiting on one elemental damage boost planar sphere. Well, this would be a great opportunity to be able to guarantee you'll at least have a fill-in piece and maybe even a permanent piece if you end up satisfied with the substats. Unfortunately, there is still RNG involved in the relic itself with the substats and subsequent rolls being randomized. However, just having the option to have a guaranteed main stat relic is quite the lifesaver for players who are looking to save on some trailblaze power. I want to protect everyone too! Help me, Mr. Svarov! The immersifiers you are able to obtain by doing your weekly runs in the simulated universe offer great value for those who don't want to spend their daily trailblaze power on the two-piece sets. If you are a Genshin Impact player, you can essentially think of this as free fragile resin that you would obtain from the Serenity Teapot. The total value of the four immersifiers you can get per week is equal to about 160 trailblaze power, which is a great value for the player as it equates to about a day's worth of free resin. What is great about the immersifiers is not only are you able to get free relics from the simulated universe, you are also able to do it in a way that helps you passively gain the other weekly rewards. With the most recent event, Planar Fisher, which gave us double drop rates for planar spheres and ropes, I can see this becoming even more valuable in the future once they recycle these events as new patches come out. My recommendation is to just spend them as soon as you get them because there is really no reason to save them up unless you are preparing for a future double drop rate event, as we just discussed. I want to protect everyone too! Help me Mr. Svarov! The Forgotten Hall and Memory of Chaos provide a great way to obtain very solid 4 star light cones through the accumulation of Lucent Afterglow. Lucent Afterglow can be obtained through completing each stage of the Forgotten Hall for a one time reward and bi-monthly rewards through each stage of Memory of Chaos. As these are farmable light cones, getting super impositions for these is a lot easier than having to rely on the gotcha system. One can make the argument that these light cones possess a lot more value overall for your account. Now I personally love utilizing these light cones whenever I get the opportunity and I would definitely recommend We Are Wildfire, Quid Pro Quo, and Past and Future. We Are Wildfire is an amazing preservation light cone that limits the damage your allies take at the beginning of battle as well as healing based on 30% of the difference between current and max HP. Quid Pro Quo is a utility light cone for your abundance units that doesn't increase any of their healing bonus but does regenerate energy for an ally at less than 50% when the holder's turn begins. This light cone is definitely valuable for longer battles in Memory of Chaos where you are constantly needing your ultimate. Past and future, although pretty niche, I definitely say is a worthy contender to use your afterglow on. After using the holder's skill, it gives a generous damage boost to the next ally who is attacking for one turn. With it being a little niche, the character I would recommend this to the most would be Bronya, but you could also make a case for Asta and Tingyun as well. Don't be fooled by the F2P tag that comes with these types of light cones. Just because they aren't pullable through the gacha system doesn't make them any less valuable and some even outperform some high level 4 stars. 
Many of these light cones have the ability to carry your team to end game content, so don't sleep on this insane value for your account. I want to protect everyone too! Help me, Mr. Svarog! And with that, this will end our video on the 5 best value items you can obtain in Honkai Star Rail. Now I know resources are limited and many players are looking to optimize their account to the best of their abilities. Hopefully this video can serve as a guide to you to be able to maximize your value and hopefully give you the upper hand. But of course, there's two sides to every story, so if you disagree with anything I've said in the video, please let me know down in the comments below. And if you like the content, please like and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.